Now I'm going to actually come in here and delete my child information. So I'm going to create it from scratch with you. You can um, create it at the component manager or you can create it here at the face of the document. You can see I have some what's called markup or document design, which you can actually learn how to do in the markup video as well, the document design video. So I'm seeing here that the person's telling me who designed this document that we have the child information dialog, that's what it should be called, and it doesn't have a filter. What a filter is, before we get started in on this, is I may need to only have certain children fill into this table, maybe the minors. Down here, they only want the emancipate, emancipated minors filling into this um, table. So there's all different kinds of way when you get this ways when you get this bucket of information from hot docs out of these repeats to just get certain information out and we're going to talk about that as part of um, our next repeat segment so you'll have actually a couple of videos in this repeat series you'll have basic repeats which are what we're talking about now then we'll talk about filters for repeats next and then we'll also have um, a few more videos one especially that you may want to come back and watch is um, nested repeats. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove my language, my markup language. I really appreciate my uh, design expert doing this, but I don't need it here for development. And uh, the, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create my dialogue. I'll go ahead and and let you know you can do this at the same time um, but I'm gonna do this from my component manager just because I want to spend a lot of time discussing what we're doing and I don't want you to get confused in the two steps so the next thing I'm gonna do is actually create my component which is a dialogue I'll come over here into component manager and I'm gonna click on this button right here which is new component I'll choose dialogue from the list and click OK I'll go ahead and give it a name child information and you know just like you saw before I'm gonna pull all the child variables in here I have because of our naming convention they're all right next to each other makes it nice and and easy I can rearrange them you'll notice I'm rearranging just by dragging and dropping although I can use the layout tab which you would have learned from another video and I'll click save in the bottom corner so I want you to go ahead and do that um, and you can pause the video while you're doing that. I'm going to go ahead and move ahead. What's really important about a repeating dialogue is its style. That's what makes it a repeat. So you have four different types of dialogues. Regular, which to be honest is probably about eh, 85 to 90 percent of what you're going to use. And then you have your repeating dialogue. I'm going to show you first the different styles and talk to you about why I may or may not want to use specific dialogue styles. Now, um, the repeated series is the one I'm going to select here. And I'm going to go ahead and click test so you can see it you'll notice that it looks very similar to a regular dialogue the difference here is it says child information it looks like a little tree I get yes that they're emancipated I can come in and put Bob Smith and their birthday and I get an add another button okay I can come in and say no Betty Smith and look they're twins and I've emancipated my brand new infant um, and I can click add another so I just keep adding the children in the great thing about this I can add them in I can see all my information in one screen users are used to working with the regular dialogue so they'll have that comfort of the regular dialogue view they just have to get used to the tree aspect here this hierarchical structure and coming in here to click add another they could come in here and click this button which is add another as well this is more of a training thing you need to train your users it's up to you if you have a lot of variables the um, view that you're seeing for repeated series is the best one to use if you have just a handful of variables then a spreadsheet is the best one to use um, 
why is it removes a lot of the clicks that a user would have to go to and they can enter their information all in one screen they don't have to worry about where certain information is in the hierarchical structure they don't have to worry about any of that and so it makes it great if you can come in here and do this where this doesn't lend itself well multiple choice select all that apply mm -mm, can't do it um, if you want your yes and no on your true false question mm, can't do that either if you want your multiple choice select one only to show all of the options in the list not gonna happen it's gonna be a drop down and um, when you get more variables in here than what can initially display uh, in in the way that they have their dialogue sized, you get a scroll bar at the bottom of the screen. And they don't necessarily know there are variables off in the virtual abyss and they might not scroll. And so that's something that when you get a lot of variables and you cannot see them anymore, I tend to really tell people don't use this, even though it's great and I love it start to use your repeated series. The last one is a, re, re, a spreadsheet on parent and I don't use that unless I'm working with nested repeats which we'll talk about in another video. So for this one I'm going to leave it on spreadsheet. I'll come back and talk about some of these other settings that you see in both repeated series and spreadsheet in, in separate videos. So that's it for creating the actual dialogue. I'll go ahead and click OK and now I have my dialogue.